welcome back to another episode of Mushroom Fleet. And today I'm going to do a complete speed build. Yeah, that's right, I'm going to finish this ship. And at the moment I'm just setting a symmetry point which is away from the core because I'm going to have the core on one side. I came up with a concept for the Hail Mary, which is the name of this ship. Um, the idea was to use the actual ship to cover the turrets and have the turrets sort of on the inside rather than the outside. A bit like a TIE fighter, but instead of a cockpit in the middle, guns. And I figured there's a lot of room in the middle there, so, you know, we could uh, expand on that. So I put in a rudimentary plan for the two floors you can see here on each side. I'm working in all three axes and went ahead with creating the basic outlay and uh, unlinked the mirror version of the enhancers I've put down and tweaked that to give me a nice area to work with leaving plenty of gap because the turrets do actually angle up and down a little bit so you don't want them touching head to head but that is pretty much what I'm doing here is putting two turrets in head to head on the inner edge as you can see just getting rid of the uh, additional blocks provided to be my symmetry and now I'm just sort of deciding how big it's going to be. I thought this would be good, but in the end it needed to be a little bit bigger. Um, <clears throat> I went against having those little covers because I realised that I have to actually fly it in to dock it. But yeah, another way I could have docked it, I guess, would have left a hole leading to the port from the other side. That would have worked too. But, you know, this is fine. So I started off by putting in a bunch of uh, power tanks because I want it to be focused on storage uh, or at least have a decent amount of storage or an unusually good amount of storage for something of this size. As you can see putting a conduit through, I did actually put a uh, paint, like a plan made in paint, I might put it up on the screen now, um, <laughs> showing how I was going to build this ship. Um, <laughs> it was a bit of a joke, but I actually ended up using it quite, not that closely, but pretty much. I think I uh, might have exchanged the tanks for the thrusters position, but pretty much that's what I've done here. Um, and I wanted to be able to walk through all the systems, and I wanted all the systems to be created in one, in one group. So everything's connected. There's a line of thrusters connecting all the thruster block groups, there's a line of power tanks connecting all the power tanks. And so I go ahead putting in my first box reactor around this first section here. And uh, I decided to make it a little bit funky and put in this little pattern there. So that's my first one, obviously down both sides, we check the corners, gives us good recharge for uh, mass. I wanted this to be low mass because I didn't want it to just be a lumber beast. I wanted to try and make something efficient. So now we're connecting up the two. I didn't have to, this wasn't in the original concept, it just sort of happened. I was like, well, power region isn't that great, so decided to do this. I could have done it on each side and not connected them across the middle. And I still could disconnect them, but, eh, you know, what are you going to do? So I made the box reactor, I think, up to like. Oh, and here we go, connecting the tanks, creating a conduit so that the groups from the left and the right side are attached. Made sure there's plenty of blocks in there so if one gets knocked out they'll still be connected. And that gives you a nice bonus for uh, your power capacity. Same with the thrust, connect all the thrust groups, get a nice bonus. I can't remember what it is, but you can see it there. So. Um, and then we add some shields on the outside, which would form the wall. Then walking down the corridor, you'd be able to see the thrusters, you'd be able to see the power tanks, and you'd be able to see the shields. And when I'm done, you'd be able to see the power drain beams too, but we'll get into that. So this is only going to have a power drain beam and good power storage with power regen planned to be at about 1.8 I always aim for 1.2 million because that's where you start to get diminishing returns on mass so uh, just taking a quick look around 
and in a second I'll slow it down and take a quick take another look at something else. So I decided to flesh out the uh, thrusters a little bit. Somebody told me that you get a bonus if you put the top and the bottom most rows sticking out a bit further. So I decided to check that as well. I can't remember if I noticed much of a difference, but I'll go back and tweak it and see. So we've ended up with uh, some thrusters here run all the way through the ship so I wanted to have like an intake at the front oh yeah so the shield system 9009 groups uh, sh turret system in one group uh, hang on power recharge 2872 in 20 groups power tank system 1240 in one group which gives me 40, 14 million 14 million total so this is only a small ship uh, dimensions, length 91, height 35, width 62. So this shield block in the middle there is only really there to, so that I've got a point to put the symmetry on when I want to take it off. Uh, you know, and it will be removed when I fit the turrets. So I just continue making the box reactors until I hit 1.1 million. And I decide that's enough power. Continue making these thrusters. See, it was hard because I didn't want it to be a big old box, and it wouldn't have been such a big old box if I hadn't connected them in the middle. Um, but you know, I wanted it to perform reasonably okay. I mean, maybe this will fall flat on its face, but there's another conduit going in there. Same on the other side, and then fill it in. So then all those tanks are together. Well, that's the idea anyway. So the larger this group, and uh, the better, and if it is the only group, you get a nice bonus. So, filling in some, uh, some more shields in there, gives a nice panel fit. See, because this is a rectangle, it's not, it's not a cube. Um, and in fact, it's not even a cube because there's contours there. Um, the idea was always to fill the box reactor over with wedges on each side. Um, and to be honest, I'm being kind of sporting with this design because there's sort of built-in weakness all over it. You know, you, you, if you shoot in the right place, get the shields down, if you break those bars there, and it'll lose storage capacity and all kinds of things. But I all, all, all over most, I want it to look good when, it, when it's been blown to pieces. Because the shields glow yellow, the tanks glow green. When you blow a hole through this thing, it's going to be like the layers inside a tree you know it's gonna look quite cool just you know uh, I don't know that was all that was the plan I wanted it to be visually nice when it has been defeated um, <coughs> uh, anyway so onward with the destroyer build now marking out the beginning of uh, what you could call an, uh, the visitor area I guess uh, there's one on each side for entering into the outer hull area. Um, but effectively, each side is mirrored. So I'm also going to be doing more hull detailing to try and make it look more like plating. Uh, I decided I wanted to have like a glass area here um, to give the impression of more floors where there aren't any. <laughs> building out this dimension here to the end because uh, I was looking for an opal shape really an elongated opal I wasn't looking for uh, a box but it's not my fault that box reactors are the most efficient and I don't really want to do a brute, brute forcing because it just seems like a waste of blocks and, and, and mass um, but I'll get to that in a late video I'm sure um, so yeah, at this point, it's looking pretty good, so, i to fill up on a few more blocks, so it looks like I needed some wedges, so yeah, it's wedge time, people, um, and effectively I'm going to be hiding these box reactors with wedges, so we're going to use black and purple, and we're going to fill them all in. I wanted to leave the crystal exposed. It's got a nice look to it. And then fan out the tail. So, you know, 
where it's going to build out at the back, it'll have a, a little fan. It's not amazing, but you know, it was one of the concepts I drew. Uh, this one did come out very different though, because none of the concepts included it being connected in the middle. The idea was never to have this middle piece that I'm working on. But, you know, to be honest, if you look at spaceships, you know, it needs to have something connecting it, even though in the game you don't need anything to connect it, but hey. So, onward with the wedges. And we continue. Oh, it's a bit of a shame I couldn't use this making. I wanted this to be more of a feature. Um, in the end, it just sort of ended up getting some crystals stuck on it. So, but oh, it's cool. Uh, so here we are. We're going to build this out. <coughs> go over the top and come down the other side. Through this bit here, I've always worried. Oh no, did I delete something? Ah, ah, I think I deleted something. <laughs> Cover it up. There we go. See, obviously, the front end, uh, I did want the engine to have the same pattern, but I wanted it to kind of look like an intake scoop um, if I could. So that was the plan. So they kind of make it a little bit stubbier at the front, a little bit smoothed off there smoothed off a few more of the bits. Same on each side. Put some cameras in. Uh, put some crystal in there. A little look-see around ski. And start building more wedges. So, like I say, this is the complete build. I think it took two and a half hours. I had a couple of breaks, obviously. Which is what you see when the menu's coming up basically uh, cutting it and repeating it but uh, so we're gonna put some wedges in across the back now here we are with the tail so I built it out so I reckon I could have built it out further but until I get more hull there's nothing to build it on so we'll, uh, yeah, the idea is always to put like some kind of black flakes over the top flakes plates that's what I meant plates so put the plates over the top there uh, went with making this look like some kind of crew, you know, I wanted this to look like a feature of some kind, like lots of rooms or, you know, stuff. Stuff and things. So, just chucking all that in there, put the crystal down, here we go with the intakes. Dug these out, didn't look good enough, dug them out more and put a bit of hull in. I thought that would indicate that that's the front you know it's a box but it's an unfinished box so maybe I can do something else to make it look less boxy you know the choices are wings um, a nose and a tail it usually makes helps people to tell which way is around uh, so there you go stuck some glass over the top like I say I'm loving the exposed uh, internals at the moment Make sure it's all still connected though. <laughs> and get my bonus. Um, and then I think we get to put the power drain beams in. Yeah. So power drain computer goes under the core. And then I decided to use this space, which goes all the way back on both sides of the symmetry line, to put in my uh, power drain beam. Nice and easy. Job's done. So, uh, start fleshing out the hull for this sort of reception area because I guess people would fly up to the sides if I'm in one of the sides. And there's two levels, so obviously I need to put in a staircase, uh, put in quite a lot of glass and a thick layer of protection. But, uh, ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and here we go some lights along the bottom for just to put a bit of detail you know helps bring out the color of the purple uh, put a bit of inverted wedge up the inside here after all it is the front start working on the uh, you know airlocks because 
chips. Need airlocks. So uh, get the wedges, get the plex doors, start sticking them in there. So that's the idea anyway. Just trim it all out a bit, make it look a little bit more interesting. And then uh, chuck the plex doors in there. I think in the end I didn't ha use plex doors. I used a sort of you got to go around the corner into an area and then there's a door which you go around another corner and then you're in rather than just a door because I found that doors just get shot out um, so I want to have a couple layers between the uh, outer hole and the door anyway it's only two maybe three hardened holes thick the hole plating I'm trying to save a bit of weight I could go for a little fly now give you an idea of how this thing handles. I've got it on standard. Everything's standard on this build I'm using here. Got a max speed of 49. Uh, turning speed uh, is, you know, unaffected. I haven't changed anything. And we're flying along. And this isn't a small ship, so it does have a slow turn speed. I'm going to take a fly around my 10 Gundams. And to be honest, it's doing just fine. The acceleration on it, it goes up to top speed with 49 in a couple of seconds, maybe less, maybe two seconds, I don't know. And it's uh, very maneuverable, you know, it's able to change direction quickly. And it can stop quickly, which is the main thing. And um, it doesn't turn all that bad, so all in all, I'm quite happy with that. <clears throat> so it's back to the build. almost done at this point so yeah interiors of course so I've got to put the staircase in so take the symmetry off check the stairs down so we've got a wedge down and then invert in the upside down wedge up uh, put some lighting in deciding on the lighting scheme is probably the hardest part of doing the interior I think I went with red in the end but I did put a few blue lights around the place just to spice things up the crystals uh, often get removed after I'm done. So. We've got a nice red area for the control core. Build some nice hull out for the docking area. Um, putting a few wedges down just to smooth it up a bit. Obviously, I must have gotten really interested with the purple wedge there. Anyway, put some more lights in. Lights all the way down the shields on the inside. Put a little staircase in here. We found that was a nice little lighting solution for that staircase. And then we put some glass in. So we've got an observation area on the sort of where people would be coming in. You know, I could go out, I could come out the core, I could be here, look out there, see people coming in. Uh, and then we put some more of these sort of stairs in stairs and things for looking around the inspection areas of the ship. You know, just putting put them in there, a couple of wedges, a few doors. Yeah. Fill that in. Don't really want that there. Make the mushroom. It took me a while to make the mushroom because there wasn't really enough space. But you know, I think I ended up making it like three times. And then ended up just sticking with the one I had to begin with. <laughs> So we're going to continue with the airlocks, got to do the ones at the tail now because obviously uh, once the front and the back aren't the same anymore you can't use that third plane so you've got to go back there and do them. Uh, just filled in with glass so it's like off limits, you can't go in that bit. <laughs> Put another, the airlock in, little ramp and you're, and you're done. I, oh no, in fact, no it wasn't just a little ramp and you're done. For this one I experimented with walkways, floors, all kinds of stuff. I think I even went off, yeah, I went off and did something else and then came back because it was annoying me. <laughs> so in with the door, fill in with glass. Oh yes. So what have we got? Oh yeah, put glass in there as well. Gives it a nice, nice soft lighting. So off we go. I'm nearly done with the lighting now, uh, with the glass rather. Sort of, it looks okay. I think I changed all of that because it was too dark when the door was shut. So we added additional, uh, added additional lights. Made the door a bit smaller, but it meant it was actually light in there when the door was shut. So 
Dale. Pues. So, continuing with the remainder of the interior on the wings or the flanks. Um, and then putting in the plex doors to the turrets. Kind of tried to make them look a bit industrial with the crosses. There we go. And you've got to take a break every 15 minutes, guys. Remember that. <laughs> and then we've got a protective band here. It's only one layer of plex glass, but it was just something to stop. When you've got your shields up and there's visitors walking in there, pirates can't just, like, accidentally pot shot inside the hangar, and, you know, or waiting area or whatever. So I thought this would be an interesting little thing. Just have, like, a band the black on the, on the right and uh, purple on the left so you know can indicate to people wh which bay they're in but uh, that's that really um, of course the turret's going to go on the inside and the turrets are going to feature high tank storage as well which means that they'll charge up from the ship and then they'll fire from those tanks before drawing from the main ship so you should get quite a bit fire off before it even starts to need recharging but there you go so pretty much that's where we're at 95 meters long 39 meters wide 73 sorry pardon me 39 meters what high 73 meters wide I'm gonna check out the uh, shield system Three groups, half a million shields, 15 or 16,000 recharge. That's not bad, but three groups for a ship like this is not bad. That means one of them is probably, I didn't clean up. For the, uh, what's this, 9,001 in one group for thrust, 28,300. So I don't know what the math on that is, but there you go seems to be better than usual when I connect them all and it does look cool as well just having like a pipe it's all you know like pipes <laughs> they're all connected up I like that so. and doors cloaking explosives power recharge uh, power recharge system is 3,684 blocks in 24 groups give me 1.06 million recharge. So, that ton of block reactors. I mean, if you were to just give 10 for each block, that would only be 3,600. Sorry, 36,000 recharge. So, you know, there is that. If it was 100, it would be 360,000, so I can't remember off the top of my head now, but I don't work it out like that anymore. We used to think that there was a certain level per block that was good for the mass, and then we found this other system, and it was just like three times better. So, you know, uh, more blocks, more mass, more thrust. You don't really want to have a, like a monolith or a behemoth, whatever you want to call them, unless that is what you wanted, in which case, go for it board cubes are in um, so yeah the power tank system is 21 871 so uh, there's a lot of storage there 36 million in 21,000 blocks thanks for watching I'll see you next time I tried to build was my surfboard. <laughs>
and obviously that doesn't really work. You have to get in the cockpit. And release the docking cap. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. PE three twelve o'clock. Oh, he's mad. That's unfortunate. Got three look, a zoom, and the character will sort of pin. So as you can see, I'm rotating like that. Uh, normal movement controls, same as if you're running about. So uh, guns don't actually fire yet. So and also large ships can only have the. Um, Oh no! Right, press X to, to. Right, and burn a little bit longer towards the blue thing. 2019, 1650. Oh, that kills everyone. True, true. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, that would have been a bit of a loss. But Camino anyway, Summer, I hear. Pure and easy, Phantas Longhorn, and Ferron 16 play. <laughs> Fox Survival.